Bonjour! Bonsoir! This is JCB Live with the nail wine style. Today we are December 29th. Dear friends, we are several days away from the big night, which we will celebrate more than ever. Because don't we want 2020 behind us? Yes. And we want to look forward, forward and onwards. And for that reason, we decided to celebrate our pre-New Year with 2021. Obviously, to move into 21, you're going to have 21. And it's going to carry good luck. And you know what we did? Is we carafted it in this amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, and I'm very pretentious because we designed it. <laughs> this is the best of the best, dear friends. Danielle, not yet Happy New Year, but... Almost. Happy, happy celebration year. of moving into the new year. We need the new year to come. Did you make your wishes list yet? Not yet. Oh, you're going to work on it. You have 48 hours. The dream list. So, Danielle, tell me how you feel about the 21 carafe now. I think it's so beautiful. I was always a little concerned before I had had carafe bubbles that it would lose all of the bubbles yeah. and it wouldn't have that, uh, that special effect that bubbles have on me. Bubbles do something a little Ooh. different to me. I know there's it's, a lot of you who are asking me Danelle's no, phone number. It's not going to happen yet. It's you different. need to qualify with the master first. He'll never give it to you. <laughs> But you know, we never know if I see picture, history, if I know you, maybe there's a chance. So bubbles for me are, they just do something a little different than still wine. Ooh, I don't know. Bursting your bubbles. They, they just do. So I am a fan of the 21 and I'm a fan of how elegant and beautiful it looks when you're pouring it out of the decanter. And the effect is amazing because dear friends, look at the very thin bubbles you know, that it's creating. So I remind you the story, 1785, Marie Antoinette. And I will continue the story in a moment because we want to see Danelle behind the kitchen because tonight, you know what is so fun today is we're going to do two little amuse bouche that we traditionally do in all our reception that we love. And Donnell spends hours making hundreds and hundreds and thousands of those for all of your enjoyment. And I want to say Amuse Bouche is a great name, isn't it? I like it. How do you say it? Amuse Bouche. Ooh. Can you show us again? Amuse Bouche. Look at those beautiful lips <laughs> moving. And you know why it's so sensual? Because Amuse in French means amuse and Bouche means mouth. So those little appetizers are meant to be amuse-bouche, they tantalize your palate, they excite you, they prepare you for the big meal without filling you up, of course. So the point is for them to be very small, to be a boucher. As we say in French, a boucher is a small bite. Right. Up, you enjoy it with bubbles, it's an aperitif, and it's meant to really excite all your senses. So I have a trivia question for you then. What is the difference? And I'm asking because I don't know the answer. But maybe not, I don't what, either. What is the difference between an amuse-bouche and a canapé? Oh, same thing. It's the same Two thing. different words, canapé. Okay. You know, you have it sitting on the canapé, which means sofa in French. So can you imagine, canapé means a little roll of anything you can imagine that really prepares your palate again okay. and makes you slowly but surely evolve into the dinner. So you have it on the canapé, hence the name canapé. Did I pass? You passed. Oh! Okay. Well, I guess you did. I don't really know the answer, so I like your answer. Cheers. Did you hear the crystal? I'll tell you more about the decanter, but we should see the nail doing two different do amuse bouche today. We're going to do two. We're going to start with a baby potato with caviar and I added a little twist to this one uh, we've I've already cooked them so when you boil I boil them boil them for about 20 minutes look at those lovely little potatoes but do it on a very slow roll boil if you boil them too rapidly the uh, the skin will crack and break have you ever seen that happen yes. when you're making mashed potatoes or anything like that so you want to do a really slow boil for about 20 minutes until they're they're nice and soft. And you like to serve the caviar with the skin. 
Yes, oh. you'll see. You'll see. He hasn't tried this yet. Not this version. I'm very excited about it. So, so maybe uh, I could tell you as Danelle is showing us the preparation. So you cut the. the so thing. we're gonna we're gonna cut a little bit off the one end so that it'll sit flat on your pan when you put it on your pan, and then you're gonna cut off the top. Okay, so you cut the end. Take a melon baller, the sm a smallest one that you have, and you gently scoop out the inside. Mm. And you're gonna put it all in the bowl. Whoops. Beautiful. And set that aside. Very tasty potato. Very important, but not too flavorful. And we've made the test between pink potato or pomme de terre nouvelle. I recommend those rather than the pink one. Too flavorful. And then with the creme fraiche. And the caviar, I think it's too dominant. Would you agree with that? I would agree with you. So, dear friends, Decanter 1785, Marie Antoinette in the Galerie des Glaces of Versailles says, no way we're going to serve in bottles because it's going to look not elegant enough. I want the light to go through the beautiful crystal decanters. I want the bubbles to mousse and to go up and for all I guess to get excited. So, the sommelier goes to the king and say, Madame the Queen is asking for that and says, well, if Madame the Queen is, you know, you might as well execute what she's asking. And always. they did it, always. And the miracle moment happened. It diminished the amount of bubbles, made the bubbles smaller, and they were dancing on the tongue. Everybody, the 600 guests, got so excited that it became the talk of Versailles and obviously all over France and Europe and it became a tradition for over half a century thereafter. Then it dwindled down and as I was buying decanters, I saw champagne decanters, or sparkling wine decanters, or mousse decanter, all different names for it. We have a huge collection of decanters and I thought maybe that's something we gotta do. So I started to design it and as you can see, it's a beautiful bubble shape. It's a very powerful shape. And it gently, through a thin funnel, I can barely put my finger, allows the bubbles to come out. So when you open a bottle of bubbles, Danielle, how many bubbles are in a bottle? You asked me a trivia question, I, I revert it to you. One million. I don't know, I, you ah! would know because, Chin -chin. is that right? That's it. <laughs> One million, she's right. So we open the bubble, how much do we lose of bubbles, more or less? 30%, 20, 10. 17%. Ooh, she's so close, 20%. Oh, I was so close. You Very see, close. she observes a lot of things. I've been listening. She's been counting the bubbles, I know that. So you lose 20%, then when you carafe it, you lose another 30%, and that's the ultimate scenario. You could see how beautiful it looks, the finest bubbles remain, and it's very exciting because it's very gentle on your tongue. And for JCB21, which is very radiant, very luminous, and it's kind of a mysterious wine because it's a blend of Chardonnay Pinot from Burgundy, that works so well. So I would highly recommend you put back the top if you want to look good, but it looks amazing next to a little caviar of course, designed by our wonderful friends at Bernardo. Look at this gorgeous plate. Oh, right? Isn't it beautiful? And, well... I I, you... He's in such a hurry to eat the caviar. Ah, ah. I'm in love with caviar, dear <laughs> friends. And many of you who come to see us, I know you love it too. I want you to... Here. Look at this. So this is the sturgeon. And this is a beautiful caviar, the Royal, that we actually make at the Oakville Grocery with an amazing Sacramento farm. So this is semi-salty, beautiful, rich, dense, pearly smell. And we've obviously chose the écume from Bernardo, as you can see, that gorgeous plate, so you could serve it that way. It looks beautiful on individual plate. Or you do what we will be doing, which is take it out and have three of those in the middle nicely displayed, so it's going to look beautiful as well. I think the presentation for caviar is as important as the right. taste of it. 
So those black pearls are really meant to attract and seduce your eyes. Yeah. And then of course they melt on your palate and accompany it with the JCB, it's a dream. So I'm gonna use the grapeseed oil. Yeah. And I'm gonna put some on the pan. So, so grapeseed oil, dear friends, we make it as well here at Raymond. And we, after harvest, let the seed dry out. And then we partner with a wonderful local company and they are really fabulous. And we basically crush it on a beautiful stone wheel. And those pits coming from the fermentation of the grapes generate a liquid that is exactly that grapeseed oil. So this you can one- see the color of it too. Yeah, is coming from Raymond. You could see that beautiful grapeseed oil and it takes a lot of berries you can imagine in pits to get there but it's fabulous and it's extremely healthy you know there's always a big debate as much as i love olive oil it's not as good to cook with anyhow warm dishes but on top of it grapeseed is very healthy for you for your transit for your intestines for your liver and naturally for your blood so grapeseed oil is it well i found for people like me who aren't classically trained amazing chefs it doesn't burn grapeseed oil doesn't burn oh. so you can put it in the pan turn it on accidentally forget about your pan and it's not gonna you it's not put gonna it burn. in your pans you mean in the pan oh in the, in pan. the pan all oh, right pan. Well, okay. well it's new year's in a few days I, so you I, know, my I, earring <laughs> I, I brushed, even little earring aid too i brushed all the potatoes with the grapeseed oil so that when i put them in the oven the skin's gonna get crispy okay. so we're what now, temperature? I, 325, 325 for maybe eight minutes. Don't do it too long. It will definitely get uh, shriveled. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the skin will shrivel. <laughs> Danelle is about sorry. to run quite a party. She's talking about kin cutting the top okay. off, <laughs> melting, keep it in your mouth for long. Okay. <laughs> So for if you okay. do, if you use about, I would say 20 of the small potatoes, use a half. Do you like small potatoes better? Yes. Typically? Yep. For this dish. Yes. Okay, good. A half a cup of sure. um, <laughs> creme fraiche. Mm. Oh, I was eating that. I thought you were not going to use it. It was pre-measured. I saw oh, you good, eating it. Good. It's okay. You didn't eat much. Mm -hmm. uh, two teaspoons of finely diced, um, fresh scallions. That's how it looks normally. Uh, yes. Smells and good, by the way. A quarter way. teaspoon of salt. Sea salt. Sea salt. From Oval Grocery yes. as well. And you're just going to mash this all up. That makes this. Ooh. Maybe you want to show how Danelle is smashing things up. Smashing so she's up. being very descriptive. You can use a hand blender also, which will really, really mix it up well, but I was trying to avoid the noise, so we're gonna smash it by hand. Okay. And do you need to have red fingernails to be successful yes. for this? Or? Yes, I figured Especially it's a, for New Year's. Yeah, it's part so, of the recipe. As magic goes, 325, here it 325, is. 325, here it is. Wow. So here's your potatoes. We, we're gonna, you know what I'll do? Here we go. Okay, we're going to flip them over. They really look great, huh? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I have put some of the, uh, the potato mixture in a pastry bag. Now when you fill it, you only want to go like evenly with the top you don't want to you don't want to um like make a big mound because that's where your caviar is going to sit oh. so you're just going to put enough i see there's a trick to everything right yes and are you going to put that in the oven for a little while no okay i'm not <laughs> the uh potato i was just hoping she was the potatoes are hot out of the oven the mixture is still a little bit warm mm -hmm. from boiling the potatoes. Can I try one pure? Yes. Mmm. Mmm. Combination is of course magic. Okay. 
And dear friends, you can see it's simple to do, but it's sophisticated at the same time. So, for my for my decorations uh, for well, our platters, well, I can see I you went, have something very nice in your hair. <laughs> I went into the Christmas decorations, which are always fun to decorate platters with. So I'm just gonna put my. Looks so beautiful. Potatoes. Look at that. I'm glad I ate one because you have not number anyhow. Did you know I was gonna bite on one? Yes, always you. I always love to taste in process. It's like wine making. Okay, so you use the two. So dear friends, always oyster shell or pearled spoon, never silver, because it changes the taste of your caviar. So you want to be very consistent in that. And you use it and you make a little mountain, right? Mm, yes. Mm, look at this. Danelle, this is my favorite. I know. You see, the caviar was taken out of the fridge over half an hour ago, so it's not too tight together. It's got to be at the right temperature. Obviously, the warmth of the potato is going to help. But caviar, I think, is all about temperature, similar to wine. So you want to be very cautious. When people serve it right. too cold, it's tight together, lacks the flavor, doesn't melt on the palate the same way. This one, I can tell you, Donnell knows what she's doing. Look at this baby. So you can put a little... Mm. Am I going there? No. Not yet. Not yet. You have to finish. And the 21 is going to go marvelously with it. So, dear friends, a slight detail if you're wondering the 21. Chablis, Northern Burgundy for the minerality, Chablis for the acidity, and of course, Ruyi for the richness. Côte de Beaune, Côte de Nuit for the Pinot. 55% Chardonnay and the balanced Pinot Noir. This is why this wine is the benchmark and the one I'm going to be celebrating in a few days for New Year's as well because of 2021. I'm going to add a little 2-0 here. Well, maybe there's a gold pen and I could do that for us. Sometimes I have one. I'll find you one. Yes. Okay, so there you go. There is your potatoes with caviar. Well, then we have a toast. Okay. This is not only delicious, but this is so lingering, so delicate, so refined, mm. so powerful at the same time. And the salt is so exciting that you want to have a glass of bubble with it. Ooh la la! Delicious. So dear friends, we'll see you in a few seconds, because now we're going to show you another amuse-bouche. Number two. We are back for number two. Danielle, what are we going to have now? We're going to have some smoked salmon that I picked up at the Oakville Grocery with cucumbers and a delicious cheese spread. So we purposely chose a smoked salmon actually from the United States. So the salmon comes from the Pacific Northwest. So it's all domestic, made in USA, and it's actually smoked with the staves of Raymond Vineyard. So it makes it very unique in terms of the flavor. So if you want to order it, Oakville Grocery, it's very unique. It's very unique to us in the heart of Napa. Yeah. But with that, dear friends, we gotta go to Buena Vista. Oh, do you like Buena Vista? I love Buena Vista. Dear friends, look at this. It's very simple how you do it. Woohoo! This is like a cannon of celebration. This is like a firework. And we are toasting almost a new year, remember, we're two days away. Cheers. Smoked salmon, an amazing dish with Buena Vista champagne. Oh, I can feel the caves of Buena Vista, but I can feel the cave of champagne. Why, dear friends? This is the most unique surprise of all time. It is a champagne from Champagne. This is a champagne named La Victoire, the victory. To celebrate the victory of the son of the Count, Arpad Harashti, who in 1861 succeeded to make Méthode Champenoise sparkling wine and victory for the fact that the French allowed Buena Vista and the only 
winery in the history of the United States to legally produce a champagne in Champagne. We make it in partnership with Jean Rémy, an amazing partner and friend of ours. Phenomenal vineyards. This is a blend of Premier Cru vineyards, the famous American Eagle, which is the label of 1861 of Buena Vista. And as you could see, the symbol of Buena Vista in this amazing shape that really symbolize in that great historical 18th century bottle, Champagne. So I'm very excited, Danelle, because for most of you, you may have thought it's a wine from Carneros, Napa or Sonoma, but it's not. We make a Brut and a Rosé, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, a tiny bit of Pinot Meunier for your enjoyment. I'll tell you more about the wine in a moment, but Danelle, we got to get started. The guests are coming in about 20 minutes. Gotta hurry. There's Danelle, friends and daughter. There is Dylan with a multiple amount of ladies. So he's going to surprise <laughs> us today. And then there's Julia with a husband and she's bringing two other boyfriends. So who knows? It's going to be quite a wild night. It's going to be fun. So we're going to do, we'll make the cheese mixture first. So we're going to do uh, three quarters of a cup. And that's goat cheese. That's goat cheese. So you can see fresh goat cheese that Donnell has obtained from the Oakville Grocery from? Cowgirl Creamery. Yeah, One great creamery here in California. Yeah. Uh, two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. And why Greek? Just because you like them? Absolutely. <laughs> A pinch of, I use floor to sell. A tablespoon of finely chopped dill. God, you did a great job. I want to show everybody, look at that dill. Ooh, Danelle worked I chopped for a long time. She's been chopping and chopping. We're going to squeeze, not too much lemon because we're going to also use the zest of a lemon, so you don't want too much lemon juice. And we don't want too much with champagne. Right. It's always something to be careful, goes a Myers lemon. They come from our garden. Look at the beauty of it. I mean, it's literally a piece of art when you look at the inside of the lemon. And very important to have with smoked salmon because if your guests are not arriving right away and you leave your little appetizer in the fridge, you don't want the smoked salmon to get dry. Right. And that's the key. Well, the great thing about here at Raymond is I can walk right out the sliding glass door and there are hundreds of Meyer lemons and they are so ripe right now and so perfect. So we're going to do the zest from one lemon. Uh, careful not to get the actual rind there because that'll make it bitter. Uh -huh. okay, so we get the zest. Oh, be careful of your finger. You may it's need it on in this a few side. days. Big celebration for Danelle, December 31st. She wants to bury 2020. Bury it. And never Don't talk it. about it again. So it's got to be quite a celebration at Danelle's mansion. So you're going to mix this up till it's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the goat cheese is maybe room temperature so that it's not uh, lumpy when you mix it up. So it's mm. nice, smooth texture. So dear friends, a big distinction not Philadelphia cheese, although I'm sure it's great. I tried it recently on a muffin with strawberry yeah. jam from Oakville Grocery. My daughter said, you got to try this breakfast of champion. It was amazing. But I recommend for here goat cheese because it adds a little bit of a twist, an unexpected twist. Every of your guests going to think it's creme fraiche, but it's not. And that's the cool part of it. So since we're doing a mousse bouche, which is small bites, mm -hmm. right? Wasn't that the definition? That's it. I chose, to use, I chose to use very small cucumbers. I thought you like bigger things. Well, I do usually in general, but okay. for a mousse bouche, small bite size. Are they always one bite. that skinny? <laughs> it, you can, can have a few in your hands. Okay. <laughs> We'll go to a bigger one. Uh, a little secret trick that I learned years ago was to make your cucumbers look a little fancier than just slicing a cucumber. Is you take a fork. Mm. Oh, you're scratching my back? It you feels scratch good. it, <laughs> right? So go all the way around. Oh. Now you're going that, doing that with intensity. You see, she's using our beautiful Christophe 
silverware because then they'll just live large. Bernardo Ecume, Christophe, Baccarat glasses, Buena Vista champagne, me as her assistant. I mean, life is really good, isn't it? So oh, yeah, it you use better. it, wipe off the, all of the extra skin, and then you will slice. It's just like a little bit of skin, that's it. Just a little. Yeah. Very selective, Danielle, in this so process. So you can see when you use the fork, it just adds a little bit, it just makes it a little prettier, a little fancier. It's all about the visual. Remember, we eat with our eyes. Those are Jerusalem, right? They are. Mm -hmm. So, for some of the varieties you may want to think of, Jerusalem cucumber don't have a lot of acidity. They're rich, they're opulent, and if they're well ripe like those, it's fabulous because it kind of brings a little bit of that cucumber taste without being too when present. It can be really overpowering. Cucumbers can sometimes, but these are perfect. And they're very digest. Many people would tell you I'm allergic to cucumber. Those typically are fantastic for that reason. So we're going to take our smoked salmon and just put just small, a small amount. So dear friends, on the champagne, which is so cool, is we actually had to convince the French to allow Bonavista to do it. And it's been a great success for us. We've done that for the last three years. The wine is extraordinary. And this is a piece of history. So Donnell, as we are in America today, it's exciting to be able to imagine the American flag floating in Epernay, in Reims, in the beautiful Champagne region, and it's exciting to be able to say we're drinking Buena Vista Champagne, the inventor of the Méthode Champenoise in 1861 in the heart of Sonoma and Napa. So this is the beginning. So we're drinking the now to the history of the origin, to the source, to where it started. And isn't it better to kind of blend the cultures Always. and always bring the best of what Burgundy has to offer, Champagne, and of course, mm. everything to tempt your palate and excite it. Look at that so I put gorgeous the dish. Mix in a pastry bag with a star tip to make it a little, a little more festive, a little fancier. And if you want, you can put a little sprig of dill. How cute. And there you have it. We love it. You smoke salmon with a cheese. Well, we're going to show it close with a beautiful dill. And it's nice. You see, it's not a lot. And dear friends, and I want to easy. have... It's easy to do. And I really want to re-emphasize on the idea of serving cheese as an appetizer. I would walk away from this. It's too much. Do like the French. And this is the one thing they have right in the dish. Amuse-bouche. First course, second, cheese. Agreed. Salad, if you wish, just to cleanse it and then dessert. But I would not recommend to have that huge cheese platter at your house. Everybody jumps on it, then you serve your dish. Right. You've prepared for hours and nobody right. eats it. Right. Or they eat half of it and you depress. So <laughs> make sure the amuse bouche is all about the delicacy, the temptation, and the style of the flavor. Yeah. So, Donnell. Oh, wait, let's do one more thing. Let's do it. So Action. we're going to light 2020 away. These take a minute to flare up. A little slow. Ooh la la! So we'll just do a couple of And dear of friends, we want to wish you an amazing celebration. We want to wish you phenomenal fun. Throw away on a piece of paper the wishes of 2020 and start a new list for 2021. 2021. It's a new year and so much will be achieved. It's going to be an evolution like we've never seen before. So, Happy New <laughs> Happy Year to come!